Good morning, folks. Welcome to your daily update. It's Wednesday, the 13th of May. Quick look at the news from yesterday. Finally, Northern Ireland got its own plan for lockdown exit. So for weeks, we've been wondering what's going on, and now we have a few answers. Although we don't know the timetable of when these changes will be implemented, we now have a good idea of what to expect in the coming months. So Arlene Foster, Michelle O'Neill, they outlined their five-stage plan yesterday afternoon. And really, from what I understand, we have not actually reached stage one yet. We're still in lockdown until the 28th of May, at which point they will review things to see if we can then proceed to stage one. As I said, no timeline has been attached to this. They will judge that on measures much more important than time, such as numbers of deaths or new cases. And I, for one, think that that's a, a pretty smart move. I'm surprised that the UK government aren't doing the exact same thing. Timing is everything, it seems, with this virus. And it seems much more logical to make changes when statistics are actually improving, rather than just kind of seemingly random points in the calendar as maybe people are getting fed up with the situation. Anyway, the sort of changes we can expect in the first stage then are things like more people who cannot work from home will be encouraged to go back to work. Uh, things like garden centres and other outdoor retailers can open. Public parks will be open for exercise use. We'll be able to meet up even in groups of four to six people, but outdoors only and with strict social distancing still very much in place. So some very positive changes there. We may finally be able to meet up with family and friends in the flesh, which is obviously brilliant. So we have to wait and see when these changes come in. Hopefully by the start of June, there might be a bit of uh, progress with that. For those of us wondering about church activity, it does seem that slightly further down the list. The Presbyterian Church are yet to issue any kind of guideline, but as far as I understand from this five-stage plan, church services would not be possible until maybe stage four. And we might be able to have prayer meetings and sort of smaller scale Bible studies in stage three, as well as things like family church or maybe parent and toddler, stuff like that. But in terms of bringing the whole congregation together, we're looking at a little bit later on. But again, it would only be under strict social distancing rules. Now, I say this without any authority here. I'll pass on any information I receive from assembly buildings as soon as I get it. And we will simply do what we're allowed to do as soon as we can. But this does give us a rough idea of maybe what to expect in the coming months. And I can't help but feel a wee bit excited by this. I, I know it's not huge immediate changes as we would all love to see, but it's a step in the right direction. It's progress. It also seems like a, a sort of a safe structure of change, slowly, carefully implemented over months rather than weeks. So we do still need to be patient, of course, but it gives us some light at the end of the tunnel, maybe. And that's an important thing, having that hope to carry us through times of great trial or suffering, knowing that God is with us, knowing that he has a plan for our lives and for our future. It gives us something to hold on to. And Psalm 73 says this, Surely God is good to those who are pure in heart, but as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. All day long I have been afflicted and every morning brings new punishments. When I tried to understand this, uh, it troubled me deeply. And then he says this later on, Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. You know, and at times it, it, we can feel totally engulfed, totally surrounded by the storms of life. We can feel lost or alone and it can be difficult to understand. We may cry out, why, why me? Why is this happening? And yet, says the psalmist, we are always with God. How? Because he's the one holding us in his hands. The picture the Bible presents is not that we are desperately clinging on to him, holding on for all we're worth and it's up to us to hang in there. No, it's the opposite. We might feel as though we're hanging on, but in actual fact, God has us securely in his hands. He guides us, he provides for us, even though our hearts and flesh may fail, even though our bodies grow weaker, God is still our strength and our portion. He's our refuge and in him we find hope for a future. What a hope we have in God 
the God of the universe who has reached out to us, rescued us even from sin and death. And that's only through Christ Jesus and the work of the cross. Folks, that's us again for another day. Until tomorrow, I hope you have a good day. Stay stay safe and God bless.